two, one. Perfect. And that's great this way. Um, I know I'm going to give a lot of information. At least um, they'll have a reference they can go back to and look at the link and view it. Or when you go in to actually do your event, you can use the replay as a reference then. So those are awesome. Thank you. That's a good thing to have. So introduction, we kind of went through already. And really our goal is to help small business owners maximize your holiday sales using Constant Contacts event feature. So what we're going to get into, well, why is it so important to have uh, an event set up and why is marketing important for small businesses? Obviously, we want to increase your client spending. We want to improve your competitive edge against the Fortune 500 and the big companies. And you want to help build brand loyalty. So by doing these types of activities, you're, you're doing all of those things. You're helping yourself. You're uh, helping yourself look stronger against the big Fortune 500 and corporate companies. And you're also building your own customer loyalty and uh, brand base. So some of the things um, that you know customers always look during the holiday season, they're looking to spend money. So it's important for you as a small business owner to make sure that you're making them aware and you are having what I call activities because activities is what's gonna drive sales, drive traffic, drive lead generation. If you don't have any activities happening, then you're waiting pretty much for everyone to just come to you. So you've got to put something out there, get some kind of activity out there. So events are a great way to create activity. So if you're a retail uh, retail shop, you can create like um, a special private viewing for maybe your uh, customers who are VIP members. Or you want to let some customers come in early to get a VIP viewing of your Black Friday specials you're going to be running and give them special offers. So you can use that. It creates a sense of urgency. So people feel like they've got to get there or they're going to miss out on that. The whole FOMO thing that is great with uh, millennials for marketing. They don't want to miss out on anything. So these types of activities and events are going to create, you know, a sense of urgency. It's going to get more foot traffic into your store. And then when I go into um, why use constant contact, Besides that, it's so easy to set up. It's pretty much almost as easy as a Facebook event. So if you can set up a Facebook event, you can set up a constant contact event. It's simple. It's, I'm going to show you how easy it is. You get walked through the whole process. They're not going to let you skip something that you need to put in there before you get to the next step. So it will walk you through everything and make it super, super, super easy. Um, some besides being super easy, like I mentioned, the other thing they have there is you can set up automatic reminders. So once the event is created, you can go in and set up reminders, which is very important because everybody's busy today. So if you don't have reminders set up, they may have good intentions of getting to your event, but then life happens, 10 other things come up. And the next thing you know, they forgot about your event until the day after when they're seeing you post about it and they missed out on it. So you want to make sure you're sending reminders to everyone to lead them up to it. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to get into the live demo in just about a second because I don't want to spend too much time here. This way I can really um, show you how you get in there and how you set one up. So I'm going to go ahead and share. I'm going to stop sharing this screen right here and we're going to go ahead into the live demo. So hang on a second. And I'm going to reshare. You're doing great so far, Vicky. Good. So let, let me know if you see a constant contact main screen that says, welcome back, Vicki. Yep. Okay, good. What I'm going to do quick, though, before we get started is I'm just going to reload to make sure I don't have to log back in because <laughs> it may have timed me out. Okay, we're good. So very simple. Who here, does everyone here have a constant contact account or um, does anyone have a constant contact account that you're familiar with this main dashboard screen? everybody um, new and maybe thinking about introducing constant contact See, everyone thinks constant contact is just for sending out email blasts but they don't realize there are a bunch of other features that are built into it that you can use so very easy 
This is your main screen. If you have a constant contact account, you're going to have your main dashboard. This is a brand new profile. So don't judge me. They have a couple of people signed up. We're just using this as an example today. <laughs> um, okay, so very easy. The first thing you're going to do is right up here, there's a little button and it looks different than the rest. And that's to highlight it and make it easy for you to find. If you click on this button here, this is where your options are. So these are the different options that constant contact, the features that they have available. Today, we're not doing a standard email. We're going to set up an event. So you're going to choose right here, event, simplify, quick and easy. Once you get into your event, it's going to bring you right into it. Now, one thing I will tell you about your image for branding and marketing, you want to make sure they tell you right here. You see right up in here, it's going to tell you what the dimensions of the image should be, 2160 by 1080. So you want to make sure when you're uploading an image, you always match the dimensions that they're recommending. And that's not just at um, constant contact. That's pretty much across the board. And what that does is it makes sure that it's sized properly. So when your image is uploaded, nothing's cut off. It doesn't look sloppy. They can see all the text that you want to be visible in the graphic that you have in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and choose an image. Um, I have one in here. So I set one up for us today, but if you needed to upload something new, you're just going to go right over here where it says upload. And if you choose that upload, it's going to let you uh, just select from your um, computer. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and redo it. And I have it right here. And then you're just going to go right down here in the blue in the bottom where it says upload files. You're going to upload that. Once you're done, you're just going to click in the bottom right here where it says done. And that's it. You're going to upload. Oops, sorry. You're ready to get uploaded. So now you're going to choose the image you want right there. You're going to see it in here. And you're just going to click insert. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull it right in as your event cover. So you want something, you don't want to have too much text in here. You're going to have a chance to describe all of that in the description. You want the uh, graphic to be minimal, so this way it's big and it's bold and they see the gist of it. If you start putting a lot in there in mobile, remember we always have to remember things in mobile. If someone opens this email and looks at it in mobile, it's going to be a lot smaller. So you don't want to have too much on there, just the main stuff. So I'm just setting this up today as if, it's a regular, um, uh, a special viewing, like I was saying, a retail shop that maybe you're having something special to have clients come in in advance and you get some extra perks. So then once you have that set up in here, minimize this a little bit so that I can pull up. Okay. To maximize my screen. Does everybody still see what I have? Yep. yep. Okay. Good. So, what we'll do is we're going to do um, now you have to give your event a title. So, your title, same thing. You don't want it to be too long. And they're going to show you right here. See how it has zero out of 100. So, your event title has to be 100 characters or less. And that's uh, best practice also across the board. You want something short, snappy, catchy. Um, so what we could do is we'll call it a uh, one day only small business Saturday. We're going to do, we're going to pretend this event is being set up for a small business Saturday. Okay. So once you have your, uh, event set up. You're going to come in and you're going to have to give a brief description of what's, uh, what, what people should expect in the event. So I'm going to keep it really just basic. And you know, what I did here was I just went into chat GPT and, and I gave it the background of what we're looking to do here. And it just gave me a quick, simple one. This is not really a fantastic example, but for the sake of saving time and sharing how to set the events up, we're going to keep it kind of brief. So. 
Just join us for an exclusive one day only Black Friday preview at fill in your boutique name um, and just some information about what to expect. So we'll have some, some food there, so a giveaway, maybe some prizes, contests, whatever you're having, whatever your event details are. That's what you're going to fill in here. And here you see um, I'm over my character limit. So if you go to put something in and it's going to tell you right away. You have too much here. So the character limit here is 600. So what that means is I've got to go back in and what I'm going to do is take this information out. And we're going to get ourselves down within the limit. So now we're underneath the 600, 598. We're good. We've got our description down. The next thing you need to do is you need to choose well, what kind of event type is it. And you're going to choose whatever category matches best to what type of event you're doing. Okay. And that's actually for SEO. That actually helps your event get found because you're going to publish this event. So you're going to have an actual landing page for this event that you can use to promote. So when you put it out on social media, you're going to have an actual landing page that you can use. So that landing page from structure it the right way uh, can help your event get found. So you want to make sure you put in what is the actual event, what type of event is it. So for this, we're going to put holiday. Now you're going to choose uh, your location. So is this a physical event where you're having it at some place where people are physically coming to attend or are you doing a virtual event? So maybe you're a coach and you uh, teach yoga and you want to do a free yoga event or a complimentary yoga event for busy moms during the holidays to relieve stress, whatever it is. You could do a virtual event too. Um, so you can do physical or virtual events. So don't think this just has to be in person. So you can use both to generate more leads and get more um, potential customer information that you can keep in touch with them. After this, even if they didn't decide to show up to your event, you still have some information to follow up with. So you can do either one or sometimes it could be both. Maybe your event is two things. Maybe it's one day uh, in person and there's also a virtual piece to it. So whatever your event is, that's what you're going to want to pick here. So for this one, we're going to pick a physical event. And then what you can do here is you can either use the account address that's on file for your constant contact. Maybe it's at the address you have on file with constant contact. Or maybe you're doing this uh, with somewhere, someone else or you're a vendor somewhere and you want to spotlight it and highlight the event. Uh, you're going to put in wherever the physical address is for the event. If it's the same as where you are, you can just click this box here and it's going to go ahead and pre-fill everything in for you. So that's easy. Next thing is you're going to choose your date, your time. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. The other thing you can do is you can also close registration automatically. So if it's an event and uh, you need to have uh, bias, you, you want it to close automatically as soon as this day comes, you can just go ahead and close it automatically so you don't have to worry about people registering afterwards. And I usually do do the close automatically, especially if it involves people paying money. <laughs> so if they're paying for something, you want to make sure uh, the ticket costs money that you are um, ending it automatically so you don't have to remember to go back in afterwards, end it, and then worry about someone signing up and having to refund them. So you're putting in your time. It's going to let you uh, choose your time zone. So that's pretty easy. Uh, it's going to make you include contact information. So if you make an event, you have to have contact information on there. So I'm just going to use full information. You can choose to display that contact information to your registrant, or you can have, uh, you can also choose to have them constant contact send you a notification when somebody registers for the event. So that's where you would just check these boxes off right down here. And then we're ready to continue on to the next step. Uh, so we forgot something. See, it's letting us know we have to review something and fix something. So right here, we've got to pick our location. So we're just going to put something made up in here right now. 
and let's see if that tape sticks. Well, we'll just put a fit in. Okay, so the next thing you have to do is you have to create a ticket for people to register. So that was the event part, and it leads you right into it, the next step, which is to create your ticket. So here you can do a few things. You have your regular ticket. You're going to name your ticket, general admission, uh, give a brief description of what it is. Maybe you have zero price for general admission. Maybe you're also offering a VIP. So you would create a second ticket for your VIP where maybe they're going to pay $10, but it gets them an extra 10% off of their sales for that day and they can go on a fast track line or something. That's where you can create your two different ticket types there. So you can create multiple tickets under the one event. So if you have different tiers or different levels, you can create them in there instead of having to create all separate things, which is nice. Here's where you put your price. So if your ticket had a price, that's where you would put it. You can set a limit to how many. So if you only want to offer limited spots on a VIP or something, you can put how many seats are limited. If you want it to just do your general admission limited because you can only hold up to a certain amount of people at your um, location, you're going to want to put your limit in here. So that's going to help um, keep some of that under control. You can set a, a ticket sale date range. So we can get this event set up in advance, but maybe tickets aren't going on sale for another 15 days or 30 days. You can set that up in there where you can say, I only want tickets to go on sale on this day. And that's how you would choose that. Very simple. Just put that back in there. Um, you can make the ticket required for all registrants. You can make the ticket printable. So if you want people to be able to print it, you can also make it reveal with a code if you wanted to, if you had some kind of special code. So that's where you set up your ticket. So we're just going to do a general admission here. That will let us get to the next step. And you can put your details in here. Make it fun when you're putting your descriptions in. Use a description that makes it enticing and makes people want to come to, to your event. Um, make it exciting. And you can use chat GPT for that too. If, if, if you're not a very creative person, you can go to chat GPT and just put in some background and it will give you some information. So we're going to save and close that now. So here it's showing, here's our ticket. So it's showing you right here, general admission. If someone's to click that up, there's their price and that's going to continue them on to their shopping cart to check out. So nice and easy. If you have, if you don't have a, a website where you have uh, e-commerce or any payment set up on it, you can use this, which is pretty easy to set up. So now we're going to go and continue. So you can set a capacity here. How many can they buy at a time? Okay. You can also make sure that if someone's buying more than one ticket, you can say if they're buying a guest ticket here, I want that person's information also. So maybe you want to collect that person's email and contact information, not just the person who's purchasing it. And then when they're going to buy and sign, uh, purchase it, it's going to say, okay, here's your information. What's your guest uh, information for this ticket, for this ticket or ticket three, ticket four, however many they're purchasing. And you can set a maximum here too of how many people can buy. And that's where you would do that. Okay. And then we're just going to continue on to the next step. Next step, like I said here, registrant form set up, primary registrant or for each ticket. So this is where you're going to choose if you want it just to be the primary person or if you want each person's information. We're going to leave this just primary right now to allow us to kind of move along a little bit before we lose too much time here. Um, and then you can also choose, which is kind of neat if you're looking to collect any special information from them. So if you want more than just their first name, last name, and email, you can hit this, add form element here, and you can add additional stuff. So maybe you have something where it's uh, there's an age requirement for the event. You can put an agreement box, and you can put in details like that. So it'll allow you to do that in here. If you are B, uh, B2B and you want the company information, you can add a field to collect their company information, or maybe you want their phone number also you can add that field as well. So 
So it'll let you add some additional things in here so it's not so plain. So as you can see, a lot more than a Facebook event, you're going to get a lot more good information. Um, and then once we're done with that, we're going to continue on. And the final part, which is really just to set up your payment gateway. So how, are, how do you want to let people pay for this? So if you have um, a Stripe or a PayPal account, you can set them up directly through Constant Contact. Once you have your Constant Contact, account set up there'll be a place in the settings where you can connect any payment gateway so if you're using paypal or stripe you can do it like that or you can say um the other thing is there's fees so you can choose whether you want the fees to come out from the client where it's passed along to them or if you want to say that i'm going to eat the fee and i'm going to pay the fee so don't pay, charge them extra so at checkout they'll see hey there's an additional charge for $2.90 for credit card processing. Okay. And you can also choose, uh, I think it was on the last one, you can also choose whether you want them to have to buy a ticket when we did the ticketing, whether they want it to be worth ticket, they have to do it in advance, or if you can also purchase a ticket at the door. So some people don't want any credit card set up and they do purchase ticket at the door, or if you, it's a zero ticket item, you can do something like that also. So once you have your main account set up, it's gonna let you go and save it. Now it's not gonna let me, um, it's, we can activate this. So we're gonna go ahead and activate that now. So now it's telling me because it has paid tickets, it's gonna require a payment option to be set up. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go back so that I can change that. We're going to go back into tickets. We can always go back and through all of this. These are the different steps we went through. So if you need to go back and change something, it's very easy to just go right back in here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change our ticket. And if you needed to update, you're just going to click on your little three buttons here. You're going to hit edit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a zero cost for this. So it'll let me publish this. And now we're just going to continue on and we're going to activate the event. And now it should let us fully activate the event because we don't need a payment gateway set up on there. So you want to go back and check to see, okay, well, did it really set up? You're going to go into your campaign. And here we go. We didn't title it. So we have to make sure we go in and we title that. And here's where you have your manage. So we have your manager campaign here. If you need to get back in, this is where you're going to go back in. So you have your landing page. This is your landing page blank. So this is what you're going to want to share to your social media profiles. Like I said, once the event is set up, you want to make sure that you're sharing that to your social media profiles. Give people the link so they can get set up. And everyone who registers is going to give you their email, their name, and their information. So unlike Facebook and some of the other social media profiles, um, you're going to get a lot more information. So you can use that. When they're signing up, there was a box there for them to, um, to uh, say yes to marketing. So I always pre-check that box. And that's uh, them opting in to marketing. So that this way you can take that and you can let them know, hey, uh, next time I have an event, you can send follow-ups to people who didn't show up to the event. You can let them know, hey, sorry, I you missed this event. Come back, I'm doing it again. You have that information. Where on Facebook, it's a little bit more difficult to keep in touch because you don't have those details. Um, and an email lasts a lot longer. You'll get a lot more longevity out of an email than you will out of a social media post. It's only uh, you have, you know, minutes <laughs> and that gets kind of lost. So um, the constant contact event and then the email follow-ups that you can do afterwards are going to really give you a lot more edge than just doing a simple Facebook event. So I think what I'm going to do is, because we're already past our time, that was a lot of stuff we had to cover in a very short amount of time. I hope I didn't talk too fast. And I didn't overwhelm anyone or I didn't um, go too slow or it was too boring. But I'd like to open it up to any questions. And then Albert's an expert with constant contact. I kind of skimmed through really fast. I may have missed something that 
he'll put some good feedback into it as well. So I'm going to open this up to um, a Q and A to see if anybody's got questions for for now after this. After I kind of went through it really quick. Oh, I think you did a great job, Vicky. Thank you so much for presenting today. Um, I will add one thing that uh, is not in the product yet, but you can see every once in a while there's something new has just been added. So we saw one new feature today, but something new that's coming is the ability for registrants to pay via Google Pay and Apple Pay. I forget what Google Pay is called, but whatever, Google Wallet, you know, Google um, Wallet. Yeah. Google Wallet. <laughs> so yeah. those two are coming uh, soon. And otherwise, I think you did a fantastic job. And I I don't have any questions, but uh, Ron or Susan or any of the other folks that are on here, if you have any questions, you're welcome to raise them up. And um, I also actually, before we get to questions, do you want to do just a quick um, introduction of yourself? We didn't really get that at the beginning of the recording, just like who you are and what you do in the world so people know. Okay, yeah. So my name is Vicki Toth. I am the vice president and creative person here at Quaint Nancy Web Design. We've been doing this for 20 years. We started doing it way back when people used to ask, what do I, what do I need a website for? I'm in the yellow pages. So we started way back then and my husband who founded us it was very curious and wanted to know, well, how does everything work and what makes the difference of why websites on the first page of Google versus um, the fifth page of Google. So he got into that really, really early on, luckily, and we kind of just progressed with that. Now we do a full stack we do websites, e-commerce, we do directory listing, um, marketing, all, all marketing, email marketing, social media marketing, pretty much everything digital and traditional marketing also, because um, I think it's important to keep some balance and we kind of focus more on doing things that are really focused to your business. So sometimes we look at your competitors and they're doing a lot of digital. So maybe we want to do like an EDDM now to hit your target audience and try some different things. Um, to get you found and get you noticed to stand out. So we're organic though. I don't do a lot of paid, like uh, Google AdWords or things like that. I don't do anything like that. We're mainly focused on the organic efforts because they get you the best return on your investment. And usually what you're doing, you're putting what I call your digging trenches, but it lasts, uh, it lasts a lot longer. So you can just kind of continue chipping away at it. Yeah. So that's what we do. Um, it's our mission to give small businesses the same Fortune 500 presence that the big companies have. So uh, that's what we're out here doing and just trying to give it at an affordable price. So awesome. not the lowest, not the highest, right in the middle, but you get the best value. Okay. And Ron asked about uh, recording and I put my email uh, address in the chat. I'm sure you can also just reach out to Vicky as well via Alignable or however you want to reach out to her. And I'll get this up onto YouTube or Vicky will um, shortly. And so, um, yeah, it's been a great presentation. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recording.